moving to oneness. Nourishing curiosity. Embracing differences. Becoming one. Music touches our heart deeply. Everything can unfold from this moment. So today I have a wonderful guest who brings out sounds of peace, of beauty, and much more. So please stay tuned to today's episode of the Moving to Oneness podcast. Hello, I'm your host, Mylene Elke. I'm sitting in Germany. It's a beautiful day. You can feel that spring is emerging. And my guest is in Spain. That's her newfound love, the whole culture of Andalusia. And uh, that essence that she's experiencing at the moment, she's also bringing into her music at the moment. So welcome with me all the way from Spain, Cordova, Miriam Tukan. Hello. How are you? Hello, I am fine. Thank you, Maylin. <laughs> and everyone, I met Miriam about five years ago. The first time I saw you, Miriam, was in a video. <laughs> in a video, not of you, but of uh, Yael Deckelbaum. And she saw uh, with many women, the yes. prayers of the mothers. That song, I don't know, every time still now, when I hear it, when I watch it, I cry. I can feel the love, yeah. the pain, the peace, the, the movement, what mothers want for themselves and especially uh, for their children, right? That they can grow into what they are. And I saw you sing in that uh, video of one of the women, and I would have never believed that <laughs> one day I would sit next to you in uh, Berlin, right? And we were able <laughs> to talk so beautifully over lunch, and we had this uh, deep connection. And uh, why did you come to Berlin? I didn't uh, share that. At that time, I was organizing with a friend and other women. Yes. Uh, a peace march in Berlin where we had invited uh, you and Yael to come and sing first one evening in the church and that was a beautiful concert and then on the next day to do the march through Berlin ending at the Brandenburger tour where you again yeah. held a beautiful uh, concert with many yeah, other musicians <laughs> yeah and we did a beautiful ritual there that's not so much the topic today. I, today, I really want to hone into, but I remember that's five years ago, but for the audience, listen to this. If you sense and sit next to someone, like I did in that lunch <laughs> on the Thursday, I just also arrived. I gotten up early. You had arrived. We were all both very tired. I had come from Italy. You had come from Israel that day. But there is a connection we both felt right away. We knew we would see each other again. We would yes. collaborate one day. And that trust and knowing and to letting that unfold is uh, so important. And so I'm so happy to have you then <laughs> here today. I am very excited and happy too. And um, uh, I could see also... What happened since these marshes uh, five years ago in Berlin, in Spain, in Brazil, in, uh, and it's going on and on. And it makes me feel um, that the people are realizing uh, the power and uh, the lead, the necessity of the lead of the women in these times. Yeah, because we come with uh, different ways of of thinking right and for me often uh, Miriam I think now I am a mother myself of uh, one child is now 15 
Wow. <laughs> to, to, to bring out the optimal and not to restrict. Yeah. And to, for him to be who he is fully. And yeah. on the other side, my son influenced me to be the most beautiful woman I could be and to live my truth and my purity. Beautiful. And this is what I also intend for many others uh, to experience and to not listen too much to our social settings, our so culture, yeah. our um, uh, restrictions and create this deep relationship first with your own child, but also with mothers. That's a whole different story. We can, that's a yeah. whole new topic. But that we mothers toward each other see and sense the co deep connection we have because deep inside we all want the same that we all can blossom can see the beauty of the world can express our voices and that's what you sing all the time about you sing about uh, being yourself about seeing others how they are and I would like to invite you to share a little bit more of your Uh, personal upbringing because you are such a multi uh, faceted woman <laughs> yeah you you come from different cultures you have lived with a, a certain origin in a different culture now you chose because you fell in love with the new place you have to share about that yeah and then even different profession and you still have this creative urge to never stop to sing and uh, Yeah, share a little bit with the world about you. Um, all started, um, um, I can say me, maybe from the first word that I said in my life, I was 11 months into the hands of my father. And instead to say mama or papa or yaba, I said tiara, tiara. Tiara is uh, the plane of the war. An airplane mm -hmm. um, and I born in a year of conflicts in Israel, Palestine and in Lebanon. Um, so in a very early age I could felt maybe the, the intention. I heard some words and this is the words that stuck into my mm -hmm. mind as a baby. Later on, uh, in the age four, uh, my mom discovered that I like to sing. I was even acting outside of the house and uh, holding something in my hand and singing for all the neighborhood. And I like it. I liked it so much, more than even um, uh, playing with my friends. And uh, I, I had my own way to express things inside me. And I felt sadness. I remember this sadness as a child. And I was asking a lot of questions about the others because I was curious. I knew that there are children that are talking different language than my language. They're in different colors. They're in different, um, born in a multicultural and uh, uh, pluralistic uh, um, country like Israel. Uh, and I could see also my family when I saw my grandmother crying and I asked her why she's crying and she was explaining that she was she missed her brothers her sisters and I didn't understand as a child where why she couldn't see them they were living in Lebanon Canada Australia because they lived in the year 48 uh, in the Nakba or in the when Israel Uh, occupied uh, Palestine and started another country here. So as a child, I have this many question. And in the same time, I born in a home that uh, taught me to love the other, to love the people uh, no imp without uh, giving importance for the religion. I am living in a, in a, I born in a village where Muslims and Christians live together That's and we are studying together in the schools and my uh, neighbors from the other villages are Jewish. So as a child, I could see this uh, uh, diversity and in the same time, I see my parents welcoming everyone and never judged anybody and uh, 
I, I only knew facts, but um, as a child, I was searching for my own identity as an Arab uh, born in a, a Palestinian family in a Jewish country in Israel and uh, also being a woman. So all this mix uh, was such a, um, a bit heavy for a child, but through my um, uh, life and through the station that I passed in, in my life, I arrived to a, a very important station where I accepted and I loved all this mixture and I found it, this is my reality, this is me. And I, I really started to love it after many, many years where I was uh, lost and I was uh, searching who I am and uh, I found out that I am all of this and I don't need to choose I don't have to choose uh, uh, any of, of these uh, identities. And it comes together with my own uh, way for believing in peace and in women, uh, leadership and uh, power uh, to change um, uh, things, uh, to, to be uh, against the, the violence everywhere. Uh, for me, war is the, also violence, of course. So this was my way for the peace and for making people uh, get closer by my music, my word that I sing. And um, since I was a little child, I could see how music and art move hearts. And when you start with moving the hearts, this is the first step to make changes. I could see as a child, the power of this uh, tool in my, in my hand uh, because I could see how it influenced really the, the body, the face, the mentality, the, uh, the attitude of the people. So I found that getting uh, together, getting uh, the, the music, um, my mix, mix of identities, my uh, uh, reality and my history and uh, uh, this is why I believe in, uh, in the music. I believe in uh, uh, working and uh, uniting together uh, the women uh, to raise the voice for children, uh, to teach our children, to guide our children, to learn from our children. Like you said, uh, Maylin, and I agree with you because um, I don't have my own children, but I have the children of the world that yeah. I meet in my life and uh, my nieces, and I learn a lot. And they are the biggest inspiration for my path. Mm, that's so beautiful. You're a fascinating uh, woman. I want to speak about um, the piece before we go on. So both of us have this intense sense of what is going on. I experienced the same as a child. Um, I, I closed down a little bit and, and then stated now living more my gifts also sound bringing out totally different than you. <laughs> I went silent for many, many years around that age when you uh, decided to sing, to have your outlet. I used it through emanating energy, so whatever, mm -hmm. and to stay fine-tuned. And it's interesting, I can really understand you, and there are many others too, when we're mixed. So I I'm, have a mother that escaped from East Germany, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad is American, but he came over as a, with the military. They still both live in, in Germany. But then I also lived in five different countries, and it is this search of... Wow. Who am I and what what am I? And, and I had to move to the US to understand a little bit my father. Um, now I have to learn a little bit more about my mother's side, travel more into her uh, areas like Erzgebirge, where I wasn't allowed to go as a child because of the wall. Yeah. And, um, but it is in, in, in my name, like you, it, Miriam, it is, it, it's within you to bring out this peacefulness so we're both born with that independent of where we have been put in the world and yes. luckily there are probably also a lot of um, listeners 
and uh, viewers that have the same purpose of emanating out this wonderful, calming energy, inspiration, and also the little fight. So everyone, Miriam is also a lawyer. So she does sing beautifully and travel the world to bring her voice to many because you need to feel her energy. Um, Miriam, you have this ultra long hair. You're tall. You have a presence. You have a presence that is elegant. There is a sturdiness to you. There is a surety, um, a purity. And when you stand in, in, in alone on a stage or you're surrounded by many musicians or collaborate mus uh, singers, uh, there comes a wave of love of peace that envelops even you barely move but it, it it's hard to explain everyone but that's what how i see and sense uh, a miriam and i also sense this awkward but i'm going to speak it out you're now really starting out to even get in larger not just larger as as your let's say radius how you ripple out your words your sounds through the world and the cosmos, right? Um, but also you're going to be asked to sing so much more because more people are going to sense and understand and desire uh, what you bring uh, to them. So sh share a little bit also the fierceness. The lawyer for me in you is... Uh, a little bit not a fight but it, there's a little bit of you wanted to understand also what is possible and you wanted to understand the restrictions and i think that is so important as i was just speaking how you emanate out everything into the world that there is also you have an understanding how and when you come to certain boundaries and how to dissolve those boundaries how to dissolve with your words that are maybe in that moment not sung, but there's still a vibration to them and to choose the right word. For me, lawyer, it means you craft, it's the art of the word or the written word or the spoken word. And in a way you are a warrior, a fighter, but at the same time, because you're so such a loving, peaceful softness, <laughs> you, you have your unique way of combining. Speak a little bit about that, please, for me. Um, when I choose uh, to study law, I choose it um, for I really want to expert and to understand where I, what is the law of this area where I am living, to have the tools not only to work as um, a musician, I thought I can also be a voice um, uh, for women, for people that need uh, real help. Um, um, in uh, existing and living and to have the rights in, in this country. Mm -hmm. and, in, and also as an Arab, it's, uh, it's very common to search for uh, um, uh, a subject and for a profession and job that gives you um, uh, security and to live in respect and to live in uh, um, uh, without uh, fears, without... Uh, so uh, if you look around uh, in the Israeli community, uh, the Arabic community, you could see that women are searching for professions as uh, uh, doctors and lawyers and uh, to, to get uh, into uh, the life in Israel and into the society. Uh, with with powerful tool as a professional uh, uh, person. So uh, in my family also, they supported uh, everyone many, many, many years to, to be educated, no matter what profession, but to be, to, to have the education, the high education in the academies, um, to, to be able to, uh, to, to stand on front of the challenges of this life. Uh, 
in this zone. Uh, I loved law as a person that um, thought that when you study the law, you study about justice, about rights, about um, uh, how to have uh, the certification and the, the possibility to raise your voice uh, for other people and for other um, uh, children that I thought all my life about, uh, no matter, uh, I'm not talking about specifically for Arabs or for Jewish or for any, it's for the people in need, for any person in need, for any child in need. So this was my goal. And of course, uh, first of all, the voices of uh, the women, uh, and uh, it's naturally, um, I thought about uh, the Arabic women, because the Arabic women have uh, not only uh, the challenges in the level of the, the state or the country, but the challenges in the society, in the Arabic society as a woman in a conservative society, where she facing a lot of... Uh, uh, humiliation, uh, violence, uh, um, uh, and a lot of uh, suppression. Uh, yes, and oppression also. So um, I choose the law, and I was uh, really enjoying studying the, the the law. I studied in the University of Haifa. Uh, and it was also a big um, journey to get um, to, to be accepted in the in the university. Uh, and I really looked and focused on it and wanted so badly. So um, I could uh, uh, meet a lot of uh, um, uh, people through my studying and uh, because I uh, took a lot of courses that um, uh, are managing with the, the issues of human rights and women rights and children rights and worked with a big uh, sector uh, of uh, Druze women, Jewish women, uh, religious, non-religious, and I could uh, made a step further to be closer to the needs and to the voices of the women around me. And this uh, helped me and give, gave me a lot of uh, knowledge. This strength that I always sense it gave you this upright column, this, uh, this surety, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the knowledge and something was like opened uh, more and more and more into mm -hmm. my eyes and my heart and gave me a lot of uh, um, uh, not only inspiration, but it's it's kind of a, a push uh, to make also to, to to raise the voice more and more. And of course, in this time, I was um, making my uh, one of my uh, important station in my life when I decided to take uh, part in the Israeli prime time show. Uh, and I was the, the first and only Arab to take part in a prime time and to sing. Super. And this all goes together. And since this station, I um, um, became uh, known after I was anonymous and I could make things, but in a very, very little uh, space. And in one moment, I could use these tools for uh, more and more and more opportunities and for more people and uh, it was the this the time where where I was uh, finishing almost my degree as a lawyer and uh, after that I worked of course in the field as a as a lawyer for a few years uh, and um, I could I could see uh, how it uh, it was needed for me also, um, and uh, I, I took now a different way, uh, being a lawyer to, to work more in the, in the field and not in the office, to be more uh, outdoors uh, with projects, with the, uh, associations, uh, like more uh, uh, involved in the reality and less in the formal and the documents and the office and uh, 
so I, I am more content because uh, I was I knew and learned the importance being in the office and dealing with documents, but I found myself more now with the working outdoors. Yeah, it's it's. I always get that feel this envelopment uh, that you you know your love of your passion, whatever name you want to to give it. Uh, but but you as the being is is. I see you like always going putting blankets uh, around people and uh, inviting them to come close uh, to you. And so you also go out to them so they can uh, experience you, right? Because they don't need it's to find you, you just show up <laughs> and you're there um, for them. It's a ping pong. Like I am getting these uh, voices and this uh, love, a lot of love mailing. Mm. It's, I cannot even explain it. Uh, it in any uh, meeting with uh, people, with women, with children, uh, I feel that I take this huge energy, positive energy, huge love, so I can raise their voices. I can spread it back to places that they couldn't make it themselves, but I could have the opportunity to be on stage, to be an, in an interview, to be in a, uh, in a conference, to speak out this love that I take and this need and this uh, even uh, longing for uh, uh, for living for life for normal life like the the basic the basic issue that we need in the life. So if I didn't I don't get this from them, I cannot give it. I cannot bring it out. I mean, maybe I can all the time speak about my own story, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. um, considering myself and my colleagues also that work for peace, uh, the, the, the huge things that Yael making, that uh, my, my, all my friends that working for the peace in any kind of uh, art or in any kind of path, uh we ne we need this uh, this energy we need this love we are tools we are we consider ourselves as tools yeah, so this interaction yeah so uh it's necessary to have this ping pong all the time to have these meetings to have this uh, um even sitting uh, with 10 women in a, in a circle in unknown place without uh, sharing uh, any information about it, it helps and it gives me a lot of sp strength and a lot of, uh, 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 let's say, a lot of uh, inspiration, seeing the past, seeing the, where, where are we going on, even with a little, a little meeting, a little uh, meeting with one woman, with one woman that can give me the world, the whole world. <laughs> Uh, so this this is the way that I believe in. These meetings is so important to me, and traveling and uh, hearing, listening, listening to the people. Um, and I am thankful for having this opportunity, um, and I don't uh, take it for granted. This is a bless. I consider it a bless and a responsibility that we have all the time to to look to make it in the best way that we can and uh, not to put our issue and personal issue to stop this uh, mission mm. yeah it senses uh, you're, you're such a beacon of love and you are this exchange of wisdom right i speak sometimes about it to practice when we are maybe a little afraid to voice or get too close to others to sit and uh, or lean against a tree and feel uh, the energy that comes from a tree moves into us, but also to recognize that the tree is curious enough to uh, pull in uh, and experience the energy of us, a human being. And this is, I would love to share also with the world, we are no lesser than anything existing. And um, we have this exchange of wisdom is what creates fun it provides strength it gives yes. curiosity it provides inspiration motivation while you were speaking the thoughts came you're like a little bit of an igniter so 
you you listen with a deep deep heart with a deep presence you have an extreme presence i mean your presence is <laughs> you're a gra <laughs> grand woman right um but what is so interesting even though you have this immense presence you're so soft so you're so soft and inviting that people um, or other women even one or in a small group or if you have thousands around you on a big march or concert yeah uh, they feel drawn to you and they want to share with you you invite them you have something about them that lets all boundaries fall it's like they're they dissolved they disappeared <laughs> and this is rare that you can find that thank you thank you for sharing this and making me uh believing more and more in the in the way that we are um going on um this invitation for the women i think I think mainly that it's also something uh, about necessity in, in to me for um, for uh, uh, for me to understand and to feel I am existing. I am making something. I am for me uh, the things that makes me content and makes me feel uh, uh, happy. Mm -hmm. is when I am making things, when I am creating, when I am uh, taking this uh, uh, mission to being a tool and to, to have uh, the possibility and to give the permission to the people to use it, yeah. to use it. And this is important for me. Uh, so uh, this invitation, I think, um it's it's also when i feel the people's and the women invitation and they invite me uh to be with them to talk to them to sing to them and all the time i was asking myself um this moment when we are singing and we feel the 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 sky is opening and the the hearts are open are opened um it's a magical moment that i believe we can have miracles in this moment and uh, this is my belief uh to make the change mm. and this is what we are um all uh focusing on we we need we want to make changes we want things to change we want uh um dark and closed hearts to be opened and eyes to see and ears to hear and to listen so it's it's kind of a net it's kind yeah. of a net and we are all needed and we are just moving uh, with our art with our voices we are moving this um, this net and every woman and every person is making this in his own way and his own yes. uh, tools also. Yeah. So we are inviting each other actually. And if I had this bliss to have something that make the people uh, uh, easily listening or moving or so for this, I should use it more. For this, I should have it for more and more and more people mm. because it's not mine it's uh, we, we are sharing and everyone has his own uh, um i don't know how to call it in english uh, it's like everyone has his own package his own uh, and you should uh, work and make um, uh, depends on the the size or or the uh, of this package you have the little, so your little is perfect. You are making the little, but it's perfect. If I have this huge package, so I need to make more efforts, I need to make more things, and I should arrive to the perfect that this little package also for other people um, to be in the same balance. So the voice and the art make the huge, the, the package a bit bigger. And this is also uh, goes 
uh, equally with your uh, uh, your duties that you should make and your responsibility and your extra work and extra effort. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're so right. Now I the last year I've been very quiet in being intern, internal um, fine tuning what for me to bring out uh, to bring my big package now out into the world. I've done the small yeah. packages like it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but I also know why am I here on this earth? There's a reason and why are we here now? And all of us have something. And as you said so beautifully, that it's uh, no judgment on size. They're optimal for us. Um, they have maybe different weight. They uh, or whatever, right? There is a reason what gift you bring, what passion, what purpose you have. And they're often very simple, like a beauty or freedom or harmony. It is not an, an extensive, so there is, you can't even give it a, a value. It's precious, each single one uh, we provide. What I also love what you were speaking about in your cultures, you have more of these groups. I have just speaking yesterday on a podcast with an, with an English man, uh, how we up here in Germany or English cultures, we miss that. We have been so torn apart already 2,000 years ago and isolated that uh, as women, we don't have this community at this moment. Maybe there were reasons if, you, if you're lucky and you live in a small village, right? You have a, a, a knitting and uh, they have, um, especially when I moved here, yeah. They have their certain traditional costumes, a lot of traditions, uh, what they do here in these regions. But I grew up in more an ominous area. There were not other women for us to be. I had to learn through others, especially all of, <laughs> I had a friend that is a Sasa, right? She comes from uh, Southern Turkey, from uh, Lebanon. I had to get to meet some Persians to start to feel what sisterhood means what is mean coming uh, to a circle. I also miss as a, a, a woman a little bit how we are spoken as when we turn from a child into women. So there are many things where circles have for us, I'm going to even say by religion or other uh, oppressors taken apart. So we lose that strength that comes uh, with a community in about eight years when I started my radio show community building was always a topic and um, we can see that now around the world and you've been a beautiful example <laughs> since you're a young a woman teenager right how we can bring together again uh, community women from around uh, the world because even there we weren't so separated if we look go further back a few thousand years or even before the room um, five, eight, ten people from around the globe were living in different places. We were traveling everywhere, right? And we can prove it now. It, we can throw history around. We were so much mixed and in communication and seeing each other for what we are. And that's what you bring out again also in your music. So share a little bit. You just came out with a brand new um, song beginning of March, right? It's called Trust Your Voice, where you yeah. bring together in your musical tones mm -hmm. all that you have spoken. So your tones that you sing and the intent and the intention that comes out of your body when you sing uh, uh, brings and supports people, women, uh, men, uh, children, elderly, doesn't matter where you live and come from, to a trust that the words they speak are the right ones. Yeah. Um, in this past year, I uh, experienced really the importance of the word trust. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a key for the peace in my country. If I don't trust the other side and the other side doesn't trust me, we will never have the, the possibility to have the peace. So uh, in, my, in many songs, in many things that I was uh, singing about peace, about love and using these words and the hope and, and this year the word trust was uh, 
uh, following me in many in many situations in many places and even without thinking about the song um, I bought a t-shirt with the that is made uh, uh, from the design of uh, the singer Mira Awad uh, with the word trust in three languages in Hebrew, Arabic, and English. Mm -hmm. And it catched me so, so, so in, in a strong way. And when I got the lyrics from my uh, uh, friend uh, Mika uh, and I read the poem, Trust Your Voice, from the first sentence, I knew this is the upcoming song that I want to uh, to sing and to speak. Um, and I wrote the melody and I added uh, a part in Arabic. I um, It's an extra part of the song where I am talking to the man. Mm. Because in, in English, when you say trust your voice, it's for everybody. In my language and in the Hebrew language, in Arabic and Hebrew, there is another, uh, when I say Ali Sautik, Ali Sautik is raise and trust your voice. It's for the woman. I am talking, speaking to woman. Ali Sautak, it's for the man. So in Arabic, I sing it uh, for the women. And then I added a part in also in Arabic, speaking to the man um, and sending a very clear message uh, to the men, uh, uh, the message that I really wanted to say many, many years uh, that is coming uh, from uh, the stories that I collected in through my life, real stories. Um, and then I was uh, in Spain and I thought about the video. I, I imagined women from all over the world, women from all sectors, children uh, uh, to, to look into their eyes and to look into the eyes of each other and to say, trust your voice. And I could imagine when we spread this, um, this uh, message, when you trust your interior voice, it's the, it's the real voice. It's the strong mm -hmm. and even the voice through all your life and years and this voice passed a lot past sadness happiness uh, feeling lost feeling afraid fe but when you trust it you speak it out and when you speak it out it arrives to the uh, places where it should arrive and if you keep it inside it will not arrive and the change will not happen so it was for me like the seed um, of the plant that I want to see, to mm -hmm. trust our voices. And then I asked uh, 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 friends, uh, uh, I, I consider them my team, women from Nablus, from Palestine, women uh, from Israel, and they appeared in the, in the, in the video in their natural way, natural, how they are living the daily life. Uh, um, and I could see the feeling when mm. I was singing really in the, in, when we were shutting the video, I was speaking out my voice singing, even there is the, the, the music in the background, but I could feel that how it influences and make a big, um, uh, influence in the women uh, in their interior feeling. So I am happy with the song. Uh, I am content, uh, and uh, of course, uh, for it, it's a style that is not commercial style. It's a it's a specific uh, um, um, music style where we have the the word and women. Uh, um, spirit and women uh, gathering and uh, so I am learning to be patient for this uh, material or these songs uh, arrive more and more to women to children to people who need it and who need to hear it for their they um, have the uh, encourage and the motivation 
to, to trust their voices. So this is my hope. Uh, I will make my best and I will make all my effort to reach if this song is finding obstacles to reach these people, I will make it uh, like the past few years to make it live in every stage I am arriving and in every place I am arriving to make this uh, music reachable and uh, possible for uh, everyone. Mm. This is, is beautiful and uh, not censoring our voice. So I experienced that myself. I uh, I'm spiritual, so I had to trust what I say touches someone. I don't translate. Some people, you know, they see pictures or they have a voice and give messages on. I had to trust that whatever I say, it took decades. Yeah, yes. but it got me to there that I do not censor anymore what I want to say. Um, because I don't know what impact and what experience another person just had that it's in front of me and even not sense of what the reaction may be. Yeah. And to stay open at as long as it, and I'm, anyway, for me, me, it always comes with love and, and, and purity, whatever I, I say. So then another point uh, I would like to share a short story because you're now in Andalusia. I was brought twice by the wind to Andalusia and you're now that uh, video was shot in Cordova if I'm correct if I watched it correctly I've, I've seen that and there's a beautiful experience and again trusting your own yourself so we were a little further down that we had traveled a few days then down to Tarifa mm -hmm. and uh, we were in a restaurant and suddenly I got cold so I got up to go to the parking lot There was no one in the parking lot. I put on my, my sweater and suddenly came the urge for me to sing. Wow. <laughs> like, what the heck? I was sitting there, uh, standing there in the middle of the parking lot. Was sand. I was, there was no one on the parking lot. It was a, a soil and uh, close to the, I could see the ocean. I could see uh, Africa from that point. Wow. I sang that song touched me so deep it changed me so deep I was so surprised what comes out and I think that also is what I'm speaking now about is what influences uh, your way of being now and singing now this voice was a woman's voice of ancient wisdom who has lived there long 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 before on a society I could feel that while she was singing it was a little of a sadness, but also that there's a reawakening of a remembering. And I could sense that it was still the time this woman lived when there was, we were able to walk over the uh, Galdebra, uh, 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 straight, <laughs> right over the water. There was no water at that time because it's not very deep. You can then walk over to Africa. And there was again, also much more of movement around on our globe. And uh, people moved from the north south, into Africa in all directions. Yes. So, and I could feel that, but there was also this love and these, I, I, I still sense that. That's now, I don't know, seven years ago that this song came. It still vibrates within me. And I think once on a radio show, it came out and she sang once more. But there is this support we all have as uh human beings, especially now also women. Uh, there's so many unseen beings here now connected to us, uh, supporting us, also enveloping and giving us, and especially you, you're tapping into this ancientness, into this beauty of that land. When I was there, I felt, um, I, since I was a landscape architect, I had to go to see... Um, Uh, the the, the gate, gar garden of the lion, uh, the, the right and the general's garden. I had to experience that, and I had to be there. I I sensed there's a whole complex of of additions to, of the architecture, but these two places were so ancient, yeah. where the the ancient uh, wisdom and uh, the water and the four winds were uh, brought into that. Um, that we're way beyond we started all fighting each other and uh, taking over our lands. 
And I sense that, and that is their pockets that are bubbles and they're popping up everywhere in Southern Spain and Andalusia. So I think there is a fascinating uh, reason why you're there right now. Yeah, you said, you told me you're now the last four years, you spent most of your time there and um, you were drawn there. And, and, and what is it do you sense in the landscape, in the energy of where you live now that influences a little bit of what you're bringing out or crafting, because you're still also, it senses you're, you're recrafting, you're trying new materials, if like if I would use different earths to paint or what, what is it for you? Um, I will tell you something um, that happened um, before I reached the first time to Cordoba. Uh, I visited Spain uh, maybe seven, uh, eight years ago, and I had this passion uh, to see uh, Cordoba as the capital of the three cultures and the three religions, mm -hmm. uh, and to see another place which is not in this region in the Middle East that had these three religions and culture and to, to experience it. I couldn't have the opportunity to, to visit Cordoba then. And uh, when I was invited uh, with Yael to, in 2017 to come to Cordoba, already I felt something that is uh, fulfilling my, my, my heart. And uh, when I reached, when I entered the city and I saw the women came to uh, hug and to welcome us with tears, with longing like they are waiting for us for many years. This was the, the feeling in such a magical place like in, in the legends. Um, in this moment, I remembered a dream, real mm -hmm. dream that it was uh, in my mind so much, so many years before I reached Cordoba. I dreamed that I am running in the little uh, streets of Baghdad, of Iraq and I've never visited Iraq. I've never um, seen any place in Iraq or imagined, but the dream, in the dream I thought, I am running in the villages and the cities, uh, one of the cities of Iraq in Baghdad. When I reached Cordoba, the same place I saw and I thought this was Baghdad, it was Cordoba, the same, the same ways, the same, oh. uh, and then I, I imagined, uh, I remembered the dream and I said, oh, oh, okay, this was, this was not Baghdad, this was Cordoba. And uh, I, I remember the second day, one woman told me that, do you know that in the past there was a big uh, relationship, very important relationship between Baghdad and Cordoba as a, uh, cities of the cultures and of the education out of the wisdom mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and things started to to connect me more and more to everything in this city and uh, I experienced really spiritual experience uh, even before we went to march with the women and with the and to sing uh, not only me me and Yael and my and our friends we felt such a connection, such a big uh, power and inspiration and magic in this place, in this ancient place. Um, we could feel the, the, uh, the history that this place passed uh, of conflicts, of war, of uh, culture, of uh, even uh, uh, prosperity because this place um, in uh, in the a few hundred years ago was uh, um, uh, a huge uh, um, a gathering of music and art and uh, and Jewish and Christian and Muslim people were living in this city together and managing together in peace and not only creating um, art and uh, music and science. So I felt home. This is the, briefly when I arrived to Cordoba, 
and so this energy of this place, this ancient place, and the love of the women, of the women that are living now and holding all the packages and the history of this place. So we, we could felt it directly, like in the first step that we put our uh, feet, uh, feet in, this, uh, in this place. And it's an inspiring place. It's, uh, um, uh, I think um, these four years, I am uh, between Israel, Palestine and Cordoba. Uh, I, I have this feeling of the, not the balance, but it's like three pieces that make a beautiful, uh, beautiful new place, beautiful place, but a lot of in common, a lot of, uh, and this means, I think, this means that we are one world, one family, um, mm. and it's, and every zone has its own uh, uh, energy, its own uh, history, uh, but in the end, we are the people of this land, we are the women of this, um, world and we can unite easily I think um, if we just trust the voice our voice oh, I love that I love that it is if we trust our voice we see also we have the ability to change yes. not even meaning oneself but we have impact so we've been so taught we have no influence on anyone or anything. And that is dissolving. And you're also dissolving that with your music and you're just what you shared so beautifully. Ooh, there's something. <laughs> My mic, one second. Oh, I have another one. <laughs> Wild movements. It goes over here. I hope it works. <laughs> yes, I hear you again. <laughs> that's why that's how it works. Podcasting video uh, we have. Um, yeah, that we have the ability of, of, of change and we just need to go into action. And the first action is to take a breath and to say, I can do it. And to bring out that one uh, letter, that one word, this one sentence, this one story, and to be open to embrace myself, right? Yes. To embrace you and yeah. to embrace everyone and become curious of what wants to come out of oneself, what wants to come out of you and what wants to come out of others. And to have, as you so beautifully said, um, uh, the calmness within to listen deeply, to be present for someone else, to see them as they are and not to provide judgment, yes. which is, is, is tightening, but, but to see a person so they can open up even further or providing that safe space to say, try, I'm here. Just whatever you want to speak out, try it on me that we're here as women for each other again, more and more. So the other one, can open up when the other one opens up I can open up when I open up again a little bit further she can and then everyone else around us changes as well uh, yeah. our children our men and so everyone it's up to you <laughs> to <laughs> trust your voice and, and so listen to um, Miriam's music Miriam where can uh, people find you or connect with you to invite you for your next concerts or your uh, next marches or find your song so i have a youtube channel um, on my name miriam tukan where is uh, my music and in the music stores like spotify uh, uh, deezer um, uh, a lot of uh, music Outlets, on yeah. <laughs> And on my Facebook, I have also a website, uh, also on my name, Miriam Tukan, uh, mm, uh, dot com. Uh, and I am trying to write also 
uh, not only to put the the songs, but I am contacting with my uh, people, with my fans, with my friends, and I am writing um, blogs and uh, sharing uh, what is going on uh, um, uh, in my life, in my personal life, in my concerts, in my meetings with the women, and in the events that we all experience and we are living in this world. So um, I would love to contact with more and more and more uh, people and I hope uh, uh, the music uh, reached to, to you and to every, every, everybody in this world and I hope this music uh, gives uh, uh, fulfill needs everyone as he needs uh, I hope this moves hearts I hope this uh, make people to to, to think, um, to relax, to breathe, to believe in themselves, uh, and, and uh, to be part of our circle, uh, to be part of our mission, and to make more and more and more step further for the peace and uh, uh, for the love, and to see more and more beauty in all the ruins we have around, in all the darkness, in all to see the beauty, to see the light, to, to try to see the light inside us and to try to, uh, to move on and not to give up. Uh, and uh, when we are together, we are stronger. When we are united, when we are, you are not alone. This is what I am saying also in the song, trust yeah. your voice because also you are not alone. This is very important. When I feel the loneliness, it's it's sometimes it's really the beginning of the fears and the beginning to, to feel the to be lost. But when you are surrounded with the love, when you are feeling that you are not alone, the voice is stronger. <laughs> so we are oh, together. It's so true. This. We are together. We're together, everyone. I've experienced in my life too. Every time I thought I was alone, fear creeps in. The moment mm. you sense you're not alone, you're connected to all existing. People yes. sense you, other beings sense you, they're there for you. Um, and it's and then you're, you're encouraged to be you. Sorry. Uh, sometimes we don't know where the voice, where the things to whom it's reaching, where it, from my own experience, only a few days ago, a person sent to me, you don't know um, the healing uh, and the, the support that I got from your music in my dark, darkest days. And I don't know this person. I never thought it might arrive to this country, like Indonesia, like, I, I wouldn't imagine, I, I didn't know this. And the mm -hmm. people um, are even uh, arriving to the point that they can share this with you and tell you how it was important to do this and that. So even you, even me, we don't know where these things reach. And then we should continue and we sh should uh, believe and trust our mission. And uh, uh, when you believe in it it reaches to places that you also don't never dreamed about so not in my mission only in every woman and every person mission I would say that even though you are lost or you don't know if your things that you are making is reaching people don't give up and don't stop because there is someone in the other side of this planet is hearing maybe one one word or one sentence and it changes his life so let's go on yes <laughs> let's go on everyone take these words in soak in that love in uh, uh, the voice the even power that uh, miriam brings th you through her voice uh, that started uh, igniting more about you and, and loosening up to solving what holds you back and uh, to bring out uh, your voice and so much more your beautiful being and what you highlight so wow this was a fantastic 
<laughs> a time together with you, Miriam. Thank you for doing what you're doing, for being who you are, for being so connected to acting on your own impulse to not give up, to not censor yourself. The list goes on for the love you have for everyone and everything on this planet and uh, how you are now even bringing out a togetherness, a community. You're, you're also strong now building more and more of communities and teaching women how to be there together and for each other. So for that, I thank you. Uh, uh, deeply because these ripples go around the globe the wind picks it up as this song this ancient woman and the lucia it goes around and over and over and uh, i hope it also comes back plentiful 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 to you in your creativity support uh, mm -hmm. that you can travel the world all over all the way to indonesia as well because now you know they the essence that you bring is independent of culture. It is just here for us uh, human being. So thank you for being on the Move to Oneness thank podcast. You. Thank you. And the best to you, everyone. Also, listen, 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 be present. Reach out to Miriam. She's so approachable. Connect with her and uh, share a little bit of your story with her because as creatives that's what inspires us to move uh, forward to do more when uh, a voice uh, comes back to us so again i'm Eileen, your host of the moving to oneness podcast i wish you the best until next time goodbye <laughs>